Hello and welcome to the Pro Tipster Football Podcast. I'm joined today by Pro Tipster Martin and Pro Tipster Johnny. Pro Tipster Dan is away on a well-deserved holiday, so well, as he's, I know he'll be listening later on, so I uh, hope you're having a great time, Dan. Uh, we will be joined, of course, uh, we're starting up a new feature, we'll be joined by Pro Tipster Marco from Italy and Pro Tipster David uh, from Spain, where we speak about uh, La Liga and Syria more in-depthly, but... Um, Today I'm joined by uh, Pro Tipster Martin, Pro Tipster Johnny, and we're going to have our usual preview of British and European football. How are you lads? Are you well? Yeah, really well actually. Very good, very good. Um, thank you, I'm doing well as well. Very good. Uh, I hope, um, that's Pro Tipster Johnny there, I hope you'll have got, uh, I hope you'll have listened to our tennis podcast. It's been doing very, very well, got a great reaction from people, so we're definitely going to be doing more then. We'll be back tomorrow with another one, won't we Johnny? Yeah, preparing already. Absolutely, good man. Right then, so let's get into the football. So Friday night sees the championship uh, clash between Derby County and Bristol City. Now we already did a combined 11 podcast uh, about that where we picked our favourite players from both squads and put them into a team and Martin and I nearly fell out over a couple of them. I know we didn't really, we're the best (laughs) of mates. But um, uh, Martin, how do you see this match going? Uh, The only stat of interest I could find was Derby have scored first in 9 out of 12 uh, home games. Interesting. Um, yeah, for me, it, it's going to be a good game. Um, you know, two attacking sides doing pretty well. And Derby second now. Um, Hot and Hills are Wolves actually. So if they win this, they'll only be seven points behind Wolves, and Wolves were running away with it a month ago. So um, Derby have done very well in the last few weeks. Uh, Bristol City are kind of slipping away a little bit. Five defeats in a row in all competitions now. Um, and I don't know, I just wonder whether they're going to have one eye on a huge game in midweek after this. I know they shouldn't, they should be looking to get, get promotion, but they've got a big game, semi-final cup game against Manchester City, which they're still in, you know, that they, they can still go and cause an upset there. So, you know, I wonder if they've got one eye on that as well. Um, but yeah, for me, you know, Curtis Davis and Richard Keogh, in the defence, they've been so solid for Derby recently. Eight clean sheets in the last 11 games. Um, as good as Bristol City are, I, I, for me, I, I struggle to see them breaking down Derby. Um, and like you say, they've got a great home record. Um, lost one of the last nine. And, yeah, I can see Derby edging this, to be honest. Even though Bailey Wright, I was waiting on the team who still don't know if he's fit or not. Um, but I... I think Derby will edge it and I've gone for Derby at 2.08 Alright good stuff yeah even for overs I was saying on, on the combined 11 podcast in the, the last 6 games 5 of them have gone overs but of the last 3 head to head they're at home for Derby they hold the advantage 2 wins and 1 draw so yeah Martin I think you're, you're on to a good one there uh, Johnny I know you don't like the championship so we're going to turn to you then for our first pick from Saturday from the Premier League 6th place uh, Arsenal are taking on 12th place Crystal Palace uh, these games tend to be pretty good at the Emirates um, how do you see this one going? Obviously Arsenal are, Arsenal are losing uh, their confidence in the last few weeks or lost their confidence in the last few weeks and I can imagine uh, they will be under uh, to, 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 to win this game to, to gain some momentum and uh, to be back on the, on the winning track uh, obviously, Sanchez is unlikely to pitch uh, which, 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 which is a blow, but they're kind of got to get used to playing without him in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I've seen Arsenal in the last game, they lost to Bournemouth, and uh, um, I was kind of disappointed, really, by their performance. Uh, on the other hand, we have Crystal Palace. Uh, they, they miss. They missed their whole defensive uh, line, but uh, I think that the players that uh, play instead, they, they did a really good job. Uh, they've got some, they've got some good results in the last couple of weeks. Uh, they got a clean sheet last week against Burnley. Uh, I think they will have, they will adopt a very cautious approach in their counter-attacking style. Uh, um, looking at the odds and the markets. And also considering the news that Ozil is a doubt, which uh, and the pressure that Arsenal are are uh, under, um, 
and the situation of the last couple of weeks. And looking at the value bet of Crystal Palace plus one, 1.25 Asian handicap and the odds of body are 1.78. So that means that if Arsenal win by one, the bet is half uh, one. Obviously, if Arsenal win by two, then the bet is lost. All right, good stuff, Martin. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a it's a tough one to call with obviously the speculation of Sanchez and Guitarian. But I was I was reading on on Twitter. I don't know, it's all rumor at this stage, but it could be done tomorrow morning. So that would possibly mean that you know, Sanchez goes to United, Mkhitaryan comes in, and if they're registered before midday, they can they can play at the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'd be interesting <laughs> if that happens. But uh, um, yeah, looking at the game, Arsenal. Yeah, they did. I, I was disappointed as well. Looking at looking at Arsenal lose to Bournemouth the other day. Um, they're a very very average lineup as well. However, they just I don't know what it is about Arsenal, but for me they always seem to get bullied a little bit away from home, and they're completely different at home. Um, so the fact that this is at the Emirates, I've personally gone for Arsenal minus one on the Asian handicap at one point eight. Um, now. You know, Arsenal have only lost once at home in the league in the last year. And that was, as we all know, to, to Man United when David De Gea had a great game. Um, you know, Palace are doing well in the league after a horrendous start. You know, let's be honest about that. Roy Hodgson's done wonders there. They sit 12th at the minute uh, and they're looking, looking pretty safe as it stands. But for me, I, I think if Arsenal keeps a hard quiet, um, they don't offer anything else. Um, they've got a few injuries in the middle of the park, you know, uh, punchings out, um, long term as well. Uh, Townsend's injured as well. Um, Zaha needs a good game for Palace to get anything out of this, but I think that we've, especially if everything happens with Sanchez and Mkhitaryan tomorrow, then pressure will be relieved from the Arsenal, um, camp a little bit. And I can see Arsenal winning this quite comfortably because as much as Palace, I, I like, will probably try and sit back. They, you know, they do like to play football, counter-attacking football, and if they if they get that wrong going forward, bursting forward, then Arsenal can do exactly the same back to them. You know, counter-attack themselves and and, and create a lot of chances. And I think Jack Wilshere in the middle of the park again, he, he's getting back to his best, if not at his best already. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think Arsenal will win this by by two goals. Yeah, you know, I have to admit because I I I used to slag off Wilshere an awful lot on the podcast. He's he's almost won me over <laughs> if he can just stay fit if he can stay fit for the rest of the season then I, I then I will sing his praises but uh just on on the team Martin um because oh. Mickey Tarion will come in he's a, he's a very different player than than Sanchez he's a kind of old school box to box uh, player um but isn't Wilshire kind of similar like that and 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 how are they how are they going to have both of them together or will they sit kind of in in the middle and let Ozil roam and then Lacazette will be the striker, know, like. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how they set up. I mean, I'd like to see uh, Wilshere in the middle of the park, and then Mkhitaryan just ahead of him, sort of as in a number ten role, okay. uh, in a free role, sort of behind Lacazette. Ideally, um, whether Wenger goes goes down that route, I don't know. But in my personal opinion, that's that's how um, they'll get the best out of Mkhitaryan and Wilshere. Um, Good, yeah, right. be interesting to see. I, I, I hope it is done tomorrow, but. Uh, we will see yeah, 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 I, I do too because I'd like to see. I understand you. I'd like to see Mkhitaryan in, in a free role because he's never had one really at Man United. We've seen him in fits and fits and starts, but I don't think he's really really been given the opportunity that. I just like yeah, exactly. I just like to see the the player he was at Dortmund. But then again, maybe it's this whole weird Dortmund hoodoo. You know, Kagawa was a massive failure. Uh, it does not look great for Mkhitaryan, so he he's getting another bite at the cherry. Yeah. I think I think um, I re- read in 2009 Mkhitaryan come out and said that it was his dream to play for Arsenal because he yeah. was a young Arsenal fan growing up. So you know, know that. Like Cesc 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 Fabregas in yeah. Swansea, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to protipster.com for more details. Uh, right, we'll move on. We'll, we'll come back to Alexis Sanchez because we want to talk with Burnley and Man United in a minute. Uh, Johnny, sure. we'll come back to you, mate. Um, 
So first place, Man City taking on 15, Newcastle. I have a stat here. Newcastle have lost uh, 6 of 11 away matches, and Man City have a win-win double, so at half-time and full-time result in uh, 7 of 10 home teams against... Uh, sorry, 7 out of 10 home wins against bottom six uh, teams. Uh, what's sticking out here for you, Johnny? Um, you know, every time Man City play, play at home, there is a the handicap is quite huge for their opponents, obviously, because they are so dominant this, this season. And this time is no exception. No exception sorry. Uh, we've got 2.5 Asian handicap or 2.75 hand, uh, hand, Asian handicap for Newcastle. Um, and you know me from the previous podcast, I like to pick out these value value picks, although they don't always come through, but uh, I just believe in a, if, if, there, if, if I see a value, then I go for it. So first I will say what I picked and then why. Uh, I was, I'm considering two options. I'm considering the 2.5 Asian handicap plus 2.5 for Newcastle at 1.88, is it? Or 2, 2.75 Asian handicap at 1.71. Again, having said this, I don't think that they can take anything from uh, from City. City will want to bounce back after the defeat to Liverpool, but uh, and I'm not, not not completely sure. Well, I'm completely sure that Newcastle can't do what Liverpool did uh, <laughs> a week ago. But so uh, City obviously will be under pressure to to win this to bounce back. Uh, even without, even if not under so much pressure, but Guardiola will create the pressure on himself that he wants to really win this game. Uh, you know, to to back, to get back on the winning way, and also to to prove for all the, uh, let's say, his critics, if he has any critics, that uh, it was just uh, one match exception to what they what they did at uh, at the Anfield. Um, so. I mean, Newcastle, even if they fall behind, they cannot open, open their game. They have to still play cautious, with cautious approach. And, because even, to be honest, I think even a, a narrow defeat for them will do. I mean, ben, I think Benitez is quite realistic about this. That, uh, a draw would be a massive result. A win would be something like winning Champions League. And, uh, <laughs> at this moment. So even if they lose by one, Two goals. I think. I don't think that's that's a disaster for them. Yeah, and so, I don't. I don't know yeah. if you, if you remember the 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 reverse game. It was not that long ago. Only, oh, was it a month, yeah, it was six a, weeks ago. Boxing day, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. It was really good. It was one nil, and uh, Newcastle really went for it in the last uh, fifteen minutes or so. And nearly got the draw, and uh, yeah, so maybe they'll, yeah, they'll but, go for it again. Yeah, true. That you you make a point here, but then obviously. Newcastle at home and Newcastle away yeah, are yeah. Two, 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 different, two different teams, let's say this way. So, yeah, I've gone for the positive handicap on Newcastle. Mm. Uh, it's more of a value value pick than uh, than thinking that Newcastle can get out something out of this game. Uh, uh, even 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 if City win by two goals, it's a it's a bad one. And if we, if we go for two point seven five Asian handicap, even if City win by three goals, it's a half. <laughs> Half lost only. Yeah, so I think the, this this represents a good value for me. There was something I wanted to mention in, in in a previous podcast, and I don't have the notes with me now. But um, if if we take an American approach to uh, going against the spread or against the line here, City the record covering the handicaps is not that good. Like if you pick this, uh, what what you're going for here, uh, Johnny? I just had a look at the last ten matches at home. For, yeah. from, from the previous ten matches, they would have only covered this three times. So seven out of ten times, your bet would have won. You know? Yeah, exactly. That's and that's all about you know in the long term if, if if you're talking about betting in the long term you have to pick the value value of it, the value bets because in long long run if you want to be successful then that brings success mm, exactly all right so uh, over to you then Martin uh, yeah I mean I, I agree with what Johnny said there um, the Asian handicap looks look really appealing uh, for Newcastle. <laughs> I think the pressure is off Man City now. I think that loss to Liverpool, you know, I think they were maybe in the back of their minds. I know they wouldn't admit it, but in the back of their minds, they were thinking, oh, can we go have an invincible season? Um, so now they've lost that game. I think the pressure's off slightly in that, that respect. And against New, Newcastle, are going to come and part the bus. I mean, that that is how it's going to be. Rafa Benitez knows that, and he'll try his best to get come out of it with a draw. Um 
but if you if any team probably outside the top six tries to go to the Etihad and play football against Manchester City, they're going to get ripped apart. So I think Newcastle will try and keep it tight for as long as possible. But then you've got Aguero, who just seems to love scoring against Newcastle. Um, 11 goals in 11 games against Newcastle. That's an incredible record. Um, you know, Newcastle have lost as well the last eight away to City. Um, so I'm with Johnny in that I don't think Newcastle are going to do anything. Um, they could uh, hold on um, till late, like they did. You know, they only lost 1-0, like you say, at St. James's Park. But they'll park the bus for me. They'll come away and be relatively happy with a 1-0 or 2-0 defeat. So my bet for this is actually both teams to score no at 1.70. I honestly can't see Newcastle scoring. All right, cool. Uh, let's turn to uh, seventh place Burnley then, uh, who have not won in the last six uh, games. They've a couple of draws in there, but no wins in the last six. Uh, while Man United have beaten such luminaries as Everton, Derby County and Stoke City. <laughs> so, you know, their season is well back on track with those results. So they're, they're in second place. Uh, they're in second place. I mean, um, let's, uh, let's stick with you, Martin, on this. Uh, how do you see this going? Uh, it's a tough one. Obviously, like Burnley did get a point. Uh, don't forget on Boxing Day against United, Old Trafford went 2 0 up as well. Um, will this happen again? I don't know. It, I'm going to wait on this one only because of this Sanchez deal. If it, if it goes through, um, and he does put, you know, he's fit, he's match fit, he can play. So if he does go through tomorrow and he can play and does play, then, you know, I, I think Man United are going to win the game quite comfortably. Um, Martin, do, do, do you think he will play if, if, if the transfer is done? I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure if he'll start. I think he'll play a part for sure. That's my opinion. I reckon he'll play a part. Uh, which would be a huge boost for United. Um, and Burnley, yes, they've had a great season, but the, like Paddy just mentioned, the Wolves are starting to fall off a little bit. Um, they haven't won for a while. They lost to, they lost to Palace recently, uh, in the last game actually. Um, but they have played, you know, they, they did get the draw like, at Old Trafford, but they've lost to Liverpool. They got smashed by Spurs. Um, and they, and they couldn't score against Huddersfield. And I think that's the problem for them at the moment. They're, they're pretty good defensively, but they're, they're failing to, to break the deadlock at the other end. And they've only scored 19 goals this season, um, in 23 games. And that, and that's a pretty poor record considering, you know, you look at Palace, they, they, they didn't score for the first seven games and they've already scored more goals this season than, than Burnley have. So, uh, for me, I think it will be, um, it could potentially be a tight one. I think United might win it um, two 0 I'm going to say potentially. So, will I look at the overs or unders? Uh, potentially, but I'm going to wait for the lineups to come out on this um, and see and see who's playing. So, no bet for me at the minute, but I might consider either United on the handicap or under two and a half, depending on what's going on. All right, fair enough. Uh, Johnny, then over to you. <coughs> Um, picking up what the Martin said, uh, yeah, Burnley are good defensively, but if you look at the matches against the, let's say the big six or the big teams, mm-hmm. they conceded four against City, like you said, three against Tottenham. So, and two against United, obviously in the 2-2 draw. But they are solid defensively, but I, I don't think when it comes to, when it comes to matches against, uh, these big teams. So, uh, Obviously, United are playing away. Uh, probably Rashford will start on the bench, uh, as usual, Mourinho's choice. Um, for me, United are not not at all enjoyable to watch. I said it a few times, but they always find a way to win this game, but that's typical Mourinho style. Uh, he gets the points. That's why he's uh, successful in the long, long run. Uh, they will have to be for United, the key will be to be very patient against uh, Barnley. But again, uh, they have to be cautious in the back because of the counter-attacking style of uh, Barnley. However, uh, I expect a close game. Uh, I completely agree with Martin. Uh, something like 1-0 or 2-0 win for United. Um, looking at the, at, at the lines and the markets and the odds, United minus uh, 0.75 are, are only 1.68 odds, which is not really, well, let's say this way, it's not really a value for, for the price. So 
I would, yeah, if I had to pick something, I would pick this, but, uh, Maybe under 2.5, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, or maybe wait for it in play bets. Alright, good. Uh, that's just the, 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 on, on the, on the Sanchez transfer. Cause Mourinho, he used to do this quite a bit when he was at uh, Chelsea. Uh, if you heard uh, Liverpool were in for a man, he'd go yeah. and sign him. And I, I just get a whiff of this again. Like, is this, is, like, does he actually need Sanchez in the team? Will he let Sanchez play the way Sanchez wants to play, which is basically, you know, what he's been screaming about at Arsenal. He's just sulking all the time because he's not playing how he thinks he should be playing, which is, I don't know if it's, it's, it's funny. I don't know if you read the Messi quote about Sanchez from, I think it was a Messi book or something. He says, um, he got, when he got transferred from, from Syria to Barcelona, uh, he was trying to score too many goals and, uh, and Messi said to him in training one day, he's like, I have no idea why you're so expensive, like, why you were so expensive, you're crap, just give me the ball. <laughs> Which I thought was great. <laughs> but, um, but, but on this, like, it, it, am I just being cynical or are there any elements of this at all? Like, do, do they need Sanchez? Would he have been better at, at, at a team like City where they are far more free flowing, uh, than, than United? And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, the, the, like I think you will get more game time at United than City. Um, but it's a tough one. I, I, I always thought he wanted to move from Arsenal to start winning trophies, and I don't know with Man City being so dominant at the moment. I'm not sure when United are going to win a trophy. So for me, it's kind of a like for like club, Arsenal and United at the minute. Um, yeah, so, oh, I don't know. It, it's a weird one for me. Him going to United. I don't understand that move. I would have preferred to see him at City. You know, he says he wants to start winning trophies, go to City, but then City did come out and say they're not paying that amount of money. Maybe they, City do want him, but just don't want to pay stupid money for him. Mm. And if the rumours are true, United you know, are paying him an absolute bucket load. Yeah, and, and, and this, what's his name? Raiola, this, uh, agent for Mkhitaryan is getting an absolute fortune as well. You know? Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. I don't know, I, 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 I yeah, I'm the same. I, I don't know where he's gonna fit in here unless he's, look, he'll have to be behind Lukaku, but, like, who yeah. is, who's, who's Mourinho going to sacrifice to get him into the team? Like, he's not gonna drop Pogba. There's, there's no chance of that. Uh, no, so. No, he won't drop Pogba. I mean, Martial will, will get, as much gay time at uh, game time as he's getting now, so will Rashford. Yeah. Matter might be sacrificed yeah. potentially. Um, it, you know, I don't, I don't know. I've never, I've never thought Mourinho and Matter seem to get on for some reason. No. Um, so he might be sacrificed. So yes, I think he he, he will fit in. He will find a way to fit into the team, and um, he'll make he make United a better team. There's no doubt about that. But it's a lot of money. Yeah. They'd be a better team with a better, with a more and more attacking manager. But then again, look if you if you went like like they could go on this year and still win the Champions League, like, and I really wouldn't be surprised to see them in the final at all. Um, but sure, we'll move on. Let's uh, turn our attention to our last Saturday match. Uh, I wanted to talk about the relegation six pointer in the Championship. Twenty fourth place, Sunderland are hosting twentieth, Hull, uh, Martin. What's going on here? Um, probably not a lot. <laughs> this, this game doesn't excite me at all. Um, Sunderland versus Hull, probably the two of the most depressing places in England. Um, I mean, I've gone down the middle, uh, if, if truth be told. Draw 3.12 for me. Um, both sides are in dire form. Like you say, Sunderland, bottom of the league. Hull City. Um, so, oh, oh, surprisingly, I didn't expect them to be that so far down. They're 20th and struggling as well. Um, Sunderland won away win, uh, sorry, Hull won away win all season. Um, lost the last three, three away, one nil as well. They can't actually score a goal at the minute, so, um, it, it, it doesn't bode well for a good game. Um, no. let's be honest. Are, Sund- Although, are Sunderland going to go down again? <laughs> It is tight down there at the start of the season. If they hadn't have changed things up and brought Chris Coleman in, I would have said yes. But he seems to be, although, yes, they've only, only won one in the last, uh, however many. And that was against Fulham recently at home. Um, but I, 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 they've got a big chance. They're only three points off relegation, uh, off safety now. Um, so 
if anyone can keep him up, Chris Coleman can. But I'm just looking at the league and just wondering if there if there are worse teams in Sunderland. I mean, potentially Bolton and Burton Albion. Mm. Uh, Birmingham are starting to pick up some wins at the moment, so they might claw themselves away at the minute. So it's okay. Uh, you, you can have a moan about Birmingham City because Pro Tipster Dan isn't here this week. <laughs> You know, they've got two wins in the last three in the league, yeah. Berman, so they're, yeah. they're slowly turning it round. But it's going to be... I, I'm glad I'm a neutral and not a fan of any of these clubs because it's horrendous being down yeah, there, I found especially some, in the championship. I found a, two horrible stats. Actually, well, there's three, uh, three horrible stats about both teams. Uh, uh, Sunderland have drawn the first half in seven out of ten home matches and there have been under two and a half goals in 7 out of 10 Hull away matches Sunderland have conceded first in 11 out of 13 home matches so like that's just boring written all over it <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if it was nil nil. No. Um, but what I want to know as well is like Sunderland have got an unbelievable player in Jack Rodwell I honestly don't know what's going on with that boy at the moment um, wasn't he released or his contract is torn up the other day yeah we, they were talking about it something like I don't know I think he's still, he just wants to play football. I don't know. He was saying that he wanted to play for Sunderland, but they weren't letting him play. I don't know if it's because he was on about 70 grand a week and, you know, there was clauses in there and they had to, I don't know, pay him an extra 10, 20 grand if he started a game or something. <laughs> one of those silly clauses in the contract. But, um, yeah, it's a weird one. Probably their best player on paper yeah. and, and they're, they're not playing for some reason. Oh, well, I mean, you wouldn't wish two relegations on any team, you know, even though Sunderland were awfully boring there and, and were very lucky on many years to stay up in the Premier League, but for to have two, um, two relegations on the, on the long suffering fans would just be, well, again, any Newcastle fans are just going, oi, oi, mate, no. Oh, <laughs> Joining me now, we have our Italian expert, pro tipster, Marco. How's it going, Marco? How are, how are you, Spud? Very good, man. Very good. So, look, uh, these are new new parts of the podcast we've been doing. Uh, we want to uh, speak more about Italian football and Spanish football. Our Spanish expert will be in studio later as well. So, Marco, what's happening in Italy this weekend? Are there any big matches or big news we should know about? Yeah, sure. We... Uh, uh, one week in rest, so the, the focus is on uh, transfer market, uh, big uh, big transfer voice about uh, Inter, for example, Rafinha, and uh, Roma can to move off uh, Nengolan, but uh, we have not uh, um, uh, um, a news about uh, it. Uh, this weekend we have uh, Inter versus Roma. Uh, in my opinion, is the best uh, match uh, in uh, Italian weekend, but also Atalanta Napoli is uh, great for uh, um, price possibility and odds. Uh, in uh, Italy, Roma, Inter Roma, Inter is uh, is uh, favorite two and thirty, but in my opinion, um, can be a um, coin flip, so fifty fifty, and uh, in my opinion. A uh, drone bet for Roma is a good choice uh, for uh, um, our pro tipsters. And for Atalanta Napoli, Napoli uh, Atalanta is underdog, but uh, in home match uh, um, against uh, um, big Italian team, Atalanta going uh, very well. And uh, uh, last uh, uh, three or four week, uh, uh, Atalanta in um, Coppa Italia won in uh, Napoli Stadium. So um, Napoli have a prize uh, too, uh, but uh, I think it's a, a difficult game uh, for uh, um, uh, Sarri and his player. Tell us a bit about uh, the big transfer that hasn't happened yet. Icardi, is, is he going to stay or is he going to go to Real Madrid, do you think? No, I think uh, not, uh, not in January. It is possible... Uh, in the summer, but uh, if Inter uh, can to qualify in Champions League, Icardi, I think uh, to stay uh, in Milan because uh, he loves this city, he, he loves uh, uh, Inter supporters. So if uh, in the future um, we have a, a great team, for example, Real Madrid, or for example, a great uh, team for Premier League with a uh, big, big money. Okay, Inter 
can't to 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 leave the car but uh, uh, if uh, if there aren't this uh, this uh, this money for me Icardi can stay at Inter for next uh, 10 years <laughs> It'd be great I love him he's such a great player um there's one other thing I wanted to ask you it, it it has come up on the podcast a good bit and this is uh, the form of of AC Milan Marco, what 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 do you think is going on? What's going wrong at, at AC Milan? It's very difficult to to explain the situation in AC Milan. The difficult, in my opinion, is not in one way, but in many way. There is difficult mentally. There is difficult in management. There is difficult in a te- technique in a tactics. There is also difficult. In a roster that uh, obviously is not uh, um, the first in uh, in Serie A, but uh, um, I think uh, Gattuso, with uh, our charisma, can uh, can to get uh, advantage in this uh, situation. But uh, uh, this year is very very difficult for qualifying in Champions League because uh, Juventus o- uh, also is uh, is sure in Champions League. And uh, in my opinion, Napoli also. So um, there are uh, there are only two positions, and uh, there are so many many teams. There are Lazio, there are, there are Roma, uh, there is Inter and and Milan. So um, there is a, a great difficult to qualify in Champions. And uh, for AC Milan and Inter, um, uh, if uh, it, at the end of the season there, uh, there are no no qualifying champions is a big big problem. Yeah, it'd be a big disaster for them, all right. Okay, Marco, so we'll, yeah. we'll, 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 uh, we'll finish up then. So uh, give us your, your, your tip of the weekend then. My tip for weekend, for me, is uh, Roma Drono Bet at uh, San Siro. Oh, that must hurt because I know you're an Inter fan. Inter fan. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, sure. But uh, at, at, the, at the moment, uh, uh, for me, the price is not, uh, is not uh, really. And uh, um, Roma... Uh, big underdog in San Siro in this historical moment is an error f- um, about traders. Okay, very good. Marco, grazie mille. Ciao. Thank you very much. Bye, Spot. As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. So then, uh, let's move on to our Sunday matches then. Uh, 17th place Southampton are playing 5th placed uh, Spurs. Uh, Johnny, we'll start with you. Uh, this one is quite clear for me, at least by the, by the look of things. This should be a Spurs win. Um, looking at the Asian handicap, Spurs minus 0.75 at 1.8. Um, Spurs, I think, lost only one out of the 11 matches. That was against City. Uh, they're pretty good form at the moment after some downtrade. Uh, on the other hand, Southampton got big defensive problems. When I looked at the last matches of Southampton, okay, did they, they play the goalless draw against United at, uh, just before the end of the year? But then before the last match before that, when they didn't concede a goal, was... Uh, in 21st of October, when they beat, uh, I think it was West Brom, 1-0. So they conceded quite a lot of goals, and that's not that's not a good sign when you play Spurs, <laughs> even even though at home. But that's not really a good sign. Uh, with with the massive uh, offensive power that uh, Spurs have, uh, I, I don't, I can't see anything other than the Spurs win. Okay, man. Uh, yeah, I agree with Johnny there. I think Spurs have got far too much for Southampton at the minute. Um, so yeah, minus 0.75, 1.8 is pretty good. Or even over two and a half goals at 1.77 might be the way to go. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if Southampton fans really believe that Pellegrino is the man to, to take them forward. Um, they got... Don't forget, they played on box today, and, uh, and they got absolutely embarrassed by Spurs. Mm. It was five two, I think it was. Yeah. Um, one win in eleven. I mean, they're they're sliding. 
<laughs> I'm just looking at the league table. They're precariously one point above the drop zone. Uh, they've only won four games all season as well. And, and like Johnny said, they're, they're struggling to find the net, even though Shane Long did finally score um, like, <laughs> over Christmas period. Um, the break is... Uh, 364 days up, <laughs> whatever it was. So, yeah, but it'll probably be another year before he scores again. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> but look, they surely, surely Pellegrino, is, it, someone has to go because they're just so low on confidence that surely they need to bring in someone who is a better man manager who can just say, right, let's, let's, let our season starts now. We can still save ourselves. We can get up to, you know, nine, ten, or ten. We can get up in, into the top half of the table if we, if we, if we really, you know, pull together. But I, I don't understand why they're sticking with him. I, I don't, like, maybe they're seeing something in training that, that we don't know about. But when they come to play, they're just devoid of confidence. They're like a, you know, like a 13 year old who's listening to too much Nirvana or something. <laughs> it's a weird one. It's a weird one because they, they got rid of Claude Puel, didn't they? Because they thought he wouldn't take him forward and, and look what he's doing at Leicester now. So I wonder if they're thinking, let's just give him a bit more. You know, we made the mistake of getting rid of Puel too early. So let's give him a little bit of long, longer to see if he can turn it around. Mm. It might be too late by then, but I, I think Southampton are lucky because personally, I, I think there are three worst teams in Southampton in the division. So they'll sort themselves out and, uh, and survive. Oh, but it's the old um, cliche, you know, they're too good to go down. You know, like Newcastle were a few years ago. Um, yeah, that's very true. You know? um, that is very true. They need to start scoring goals and getting wins from somewhere. And yeah. at the moment, I can't see where it's coming from. Because if they do go down, like all their best players will will be gone immediately. You know, because you, you would imagine that they wouldn't have a, a relegation a, re, a relegation relegation clauses in their contract that sees them being paid less because they, they've been a safe sure. team for so long. You know, so yeah, yeah, agree. Oh. Um, we'll see. Just one more, just, sorry guys, just one more stat for this game and one, uh, bad option that I found just now. Uh, Spurs won, uh, the, uh, in six out of the last eight matches in the Premier League. They were winning at half time and then won the, at the full time. And the odds for Spurs to win the, the, the first half are 2.11. That's quite, a, that's quite a value as well, maybe. Yeah, that's or nice. even if you if you take half time Asian handicap, the minus zero point twenty five on Spurs, so that that is one point seven two. That means if if it's a draw, it's uh, on, only a half uh, half half lost. Okay, good mm. stuff. Uh, right then, let's move on to some uh, European football happening on Sunday. So second place Leon are taking on a uh, first place PSG. Uh, some stats I found here. There have been um, over 3.5 goals in 11 out of 18 Leon home games and over 2.5 in 16 out of 20. PSG have had a win-win double results, so half-time, full-time in 12 out of 20 away matches. Now, I got some uh, some stick uh, from people on social media, uh, thanks to yesterday's podcast, uh, where I said I'd rather watch English Championship than uh, League 1. So, Martin, back me up here, will you? What? what They've given you stick because you prefer the English Championship? Yeah. Oh wow! I don't know. I don't know. Well, they need to read the statistics because uh, the championship is uh, is being watched by a lot more people. So. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm with the popular crowd. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, when you watch when you watch a game like this, I guess it is quite entertaining. But ninety percent of of French football is boring. You know, I'd rather watch Burton Albion. Burton Albion versus Sunderland than I would you know Saint Etienne versus Nantes or something like that mm, <laughs> um, yeah not exactly appealing is it it's not as exciting uh, Johnny we'll start with you then on this because uh, you you nominated uh, this one uh, here um, how do you see yeah. it going for Leon? Um, <laughs> this is a tough obviously this is a second against first team uh, but it's a it's a tough match for um, for Leon. um Obviously, PSG were incredible in, in the mid in the midweek when they beat Dijon eight nil. The Neymar scored four goals. Uh, Cavani equaled the record for the uh, uh, best uh, PSG uh, striker with, with the most goals. He equaled the record of Ibrahimovic. Uh, but there was a controversy at the end when Neymar didn't uh, allow Cavani mm. to take the penalty, which would make Cavani the 
<laughs> the best uh, PSG scorer of all times. Uh, and I think, uh, for me, I think it's just a matter of time until these two will have a argument again. Probably they don't like each other too much anyway. But uh, when they play together, it's just they just score so many goals. Uh, so yeah, it will be very difficult uh, for 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 Lyon to get anything out of this game. But uh, ooh, yeah, I would like Lyon to get something, but uh, they they have to rely on uh, Depay, former United player. He's yeah. been pretty influential for them with eight goals, five assists, and with Mariano. Uh, Scored 13 goals, but uh, ah, looking at the at the line, I fancy Lyon plus 1.5 on any on Asian handicap. The odds are 1.9 or something around that that price, but it will be extremely difficult. Lyon got the quality to 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 make the game hard for PSG, but not sure they can take points from them at the moment. I mean they are. They didn't lose in the last five games. Uh, uh, Lyon, but PSG won the last five games. And the form they are at the moment, uh, it's going to be difficult to stop them. But this is a value bet for me. Lyon plus 1.5. There's a handicap. All right, good. Uh, Martin, did you see anything here? Um, you know what? I didn't. Um, there's no... I mean, I, I can understand why Johnny's gone for that. But for me, I, I just didn't find any value at all, to be honest. You know... If PSG do what they did against Dijon, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? Um, then Leon haven't got a prayer, to be honest. I know Leon are, are, are a good team on their day, and they'll, they'll, they'll put up the fight um, for PSG. Don't you know? No two bones about that. However, I just yeah, PSG are just too good, <laughs> too good. Absolutely running away of everything. Won the last four meetings against Leon as well. Um, I think PSG will win it, but there's no value for me to go for anything. So I'm joined now by our Spanish resident expert, pro tipster, David. How's it going, man? Hello, everyone. That's that fine. Today is Thursday, so... Yeah, we're nearly we at the weekend. We can eat close, you know. <laughs> um, so look, what's going on in Spain this uh, this week? Any news for us? Well, we have that that we 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 have the the first leg of the quarterfinal of Copa del Rey. Yesterday we had the first games with the let's say like two surprises, you know, like Barcelona loss after twenty twenty nine games without any any loss, so they lost against Espanyol one zero. Did the first leg? We had the second leg next week, but for the moment, Espanyol is leading this. This game, so we'll see what happens. But I guess Barcelona will come back, you know. Probably. Yesterday only Messi played in the lineup. They don't have, they didn't have Iniesta or, or Luis Suarez. He played in the second half, Luis Suarez. But uh, I, I, I think that they will be, they will be back in the yeah. second leg. Atletico's, uh, Atletico lost as well. Yeah, Atletico, one. another surprise. Atletico lost one two at home with Sevilla. Everyone thought that Sevilla we we lost because they are they are not having very good season changing the coach but the results are not so good but yesterday they say that they have a bit of luck you know they score they were one zero for Atletico Diego Costa score again but later they come back and they score two goals in ten minutes so we'll see what happened in Sevilla now it could be tough for Atletico because in such a big one is always hard to play so we'll see what happened and Valencia won. To one to Alaves yesterday. For them, probably easy, but we'll see what happens because Alaves played last year the final against Barcelona, so they are doing well in the competition the last two years. And for today, we have Ramadi game against Leganes away. We'll see what happened today. <laughs> You're yeah. not so confident, you know, huh? Ronaldo is out today, Benzema is out, I think. Only Gareth Bale. Could be in the in the lineup, but we'll see what happens. I know, I know, I don't trust too much in Real Madrid this season. I hope they can win, but I'm not sure about them. We'll mm. see what happens. We'll see. Uh, what's happening then this, this weekend? What are the biggest matches? Well, the weekend we have quite interesting matches. Let me check. We have, for example, one interesting Espanol Sevilla on Saturday. 
it can be good game. They are they are they are playing like like I said they played this this week in the Spanish Cup, and we we'll see what they can do. We have uh, Atletico Madrid. He play at home against Girona. Girona doing very well this season, really really well. They are coming from the second league, but they are playing really well. Uh, more interesting game, for example, we have uh, Barcelona play play against uh, Betis in Sevilla. Betis is after two two wins, so and one of them it was really really good game because they they won Sevilla three five, uh, the Clásico de Sevilla. Yeah. So they they are coming with a lot of confidence. So we'll see if Barcelona can can lose any point this this weekend. I mean, I'm not sure, but uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we have surprise this Sunday. And what about Real Madrid? They play at home with Deportivo de la Coruña on Sunday at four. We'll see what they can do. I hope they can win. You know, they are after three, three, three games that they cannot win in the league, two draws and one draw. So I guess it's time to win. You know. No, for 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 Barca now, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, do you think it's going to be difficult for them to stay? Stay motivated because they're so far ahead. Real Madrid are, are no threat at all. Are they? Do you think that they're just gonna maybe they, that maybe they'll go on autopilot for the for the uh, rest of La Liga, or um, you know how how, how 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 will they be just concentrating on the Champions League? I mean, I think that they will play with the the say the second team, not the second team, but the the guy that they are not playing so often. Yeah. They will play in the league. And in Champions League, they will be more focused with the lineup, the top lineup. But I think they have very good bench this season, you know. The, with Valverde, everyone is in. So, you know, like last season with Luis Enrique, that's only two, 12 or 13 guys mm-hmm. they will play. But this season, there are like 15, 16 guys that they play often. So, I think they... They, I mean, it's hard. I, they are gonna win the the league probably. I mean, easy. You know, they don't have any any problem. It's too long still. You know, we have uh, another nineteen games, mm. but it could be hard. You know, that someone could defeat them. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. And what what's your take on on the Griezmann situation? Is he going to go to Barca in the summer? You mean Griezmann? Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm sure. I mean, not sure, but uh, no one knows. But 90% that he will leave Atletico. Where? I don't know. Mm. People say about Manchester United. People say about Barcelona. But about Barcelona, he can go, of course. But where? Where is he going to play? Mm. You have Coutinho, you have the Bele, you have Luis Suarez, Messi. Yeah. You know, players in attack right mm. now. Mm-hmm. Well, the melee danger, you know. So yeah, like, uh, I suppose a lot depends on 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 how his his World Cup goes as well, because if he has a good World Cup, then yeah. that's going to add another twenty, thirty million to his price tag as well. But I get, I get, he will go to Manchester. I think he likes Manchester. He's all the time showing something in in social network about Manchester. Mm, okay, and, yeah. uh, his brother is all the time with the Manchester United T-shirt, something yeah. like that. He's doing something to go there, you know. And I think Mourinho would be so happy. Yeah, maybe he'll smile for a change, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, uh, David, have you got a tip for, for the weekend then? Well, I'm working on that, but uh, I saw, for example, for Saturday, really interesting game, that's Palma Valencia. At Palma, you know, they are, like, in really bad situation this season. They are seven points down of the... They are in relegation with 11 points, and the the the... The, to reach to reach the um, out of relegation, they have they have to have uh, seven points. So it's hard for them, and they play at home against Valencia. And I saw that the odds are really interesting in many places, like more than one point eighty for Valencia to win. So I think it can be really interesting uh, bet for this Saturday for the moment, Valencia to win away. Again, that Palmas. I think really interesting. Okay. Thank you so much. Talk to you next week then, man. Thank you. Bye. If you have any betting questions you'd like to ask, don't be shy. Get in touch with Patty, Martin, or Dan on Twitter. ProTipster IRL, ProTipster EN, or ProTipster DAN. Or on Facebook at ProTipster UK. So we're back then, and uh, we're going to have a look at a Dutch match. Uh, second place, Ajax are taking on fifth place, the Feyenoord. So this is usually the, the biggest, most bloodthirsty match of the Eredivisie every year. Um, Johnny, how do you see it going? 
Yeah, this is the the, the classic, uh, as they call it in the uh, Netherlands. Obviously, Feyenoord are under underperforming this season compared to last season when they won the title. They are 14 points behind the the leaders' pace, Fey. So it's a kind of a disappointment for them. Uh, they can easily get into the top four or maybe even top three, but. Uh, Obviously, after last season, anything other than a title will be a disappointment. But uh, with with such a margin after, uh, from the first place, I don't think they can close it. Um, some interesting uh, stats and some interesting uh, possible uh, bets and picks. Um, last 13 game, 30 era DPC games for Ajax were over 2.5 goals. So that's quite a number. Uh, and yeah, so so looking at the looking at the I, I definitely look at the over market and over two point seven five at one point nine nine seven. Uh, when the, these two play the first first picture of the of the season in October, uh, Ajax won a four one four one uh, away to 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 fire an orb. So and but. Then after that, that was the last time that Feyenoord lost a match in RDPC. That was against Ajax. Uh, both teams scored in their last five matches of their head-to-head matches. So, but Ajax only lost once in the last 13 games to Feyenoord. So Ajax win and uh, over 2.75 goals would be the logical outcomes. However, Ajax changed their approach during the winter break, surprisingly, which might be a factor, but uh, I don't think they will ch- change their style of play too much. They're playing, they've got some talented youngsters and they will play very attacking style. So, RDFC is known for a lot of goals, so I think uh, over 2.75 and 1.97 uh, sounds good to me. Magic. Uh, Martin? Yeah, that's not a bad price, actually. Um, I've just gone for a simple Ajax uh, win at 1.67 here. I, I just, yeah, it's, it's a big game, but uh, like Johnny said, Feyenoord just aren't, aren't doing the business this season. It's just not it's just not clicking for them. Um, they've not won in Amsterdam for over 12 years. Um, that's, that, that's, for me, not going to change because um, Ajax have only lost three at home in the last two and a half years. Um They've won the last four in a, in a row as well, like, right? their last four home games. They've scored 14 goals. So, I can see this being a high scoring game, like Johnny said. Um, so yeah, over, overs, maybe even over three and a half might be, might be something to go for, but I've played it safe. I've gone, gone for IX home win at 1.67. I'm looking forward to watching it, to be fair. I, I, I want to see how, how Clive gets on because he's, he's looking just as good as his dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is, yeah. I wonder, I wonder how long will they be able to keep him for? Maybe another season, I hope, anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, we had a pro tipster Marco on there earlier from uh, our, our Italy, our Italian representative. And, uh, uh, yeah, he was, he was, um, he gave us his uh, tip of the weekend. He went for Roma, uh, draw no bet. So we're going to have a chat about that match. So third place Inter are taking on fifth place Roma. Roma have won by two or more goals in 10 out of 15 away matches. And they've scored first in 15 out of 18 away matches as well. So, um, uh, Martin, we'll stick with you here. What do you think? Yeah, I know um, Marco went, uh, said he went for the draw no bet uh, on the Roma selection, and I, I tend to agree with him, to be honest. Um, I, I don't think... I don't know. It's, it, it's a tough one. I don't think Roma... I don't think Roman winning. I've not actually gone for anything yet, but I might be tempted to go down the middle here and go for the draw at 3.47, only because they're very well well matched. Um, you know, Roma got Dzeko, Inter got Icardi. Um, I, I've heard that I, both of those could could be subject to potential moves, so that'd be interesting to see how um, how that goes. Like, there's rumours that Icardi's potentially going to Real Madrid or, or Chelsea are looking at him, and Chelsea are um, rumoured to be looking at Dzeko as well, surprisingly. No. Um, but yeah, just looking at like how they're getting on recently, they're both in pretty bad form. Just, you know, Roma lost three, drawn one of the last four, Inter lost three, drawn two of the last five, so you know, neither, neither of the sides can, can get a win at the moment, so for me, I think I think Marco's picked a good one there, but 
Um, I think there's a little bit more value on the draw at 3.47 for me. So I think, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go for. All right, very good. Uh, so what, what do you make of it then, Johnny? Uh, tough match. Uh, both are not in really good form. Uh, yeah, Inter winless in last five, Roma in last three. However, this match comes after a little break. So that there might, this is one factor to consider. Uh, both of these teams, um, uh, made in seven out of the last ten matches, uh, under results. So there were not too many goals. Um, Inter are struggling for goals. That's, we have to say this. And I believe the first ma- first goal, will, whoever scores the first goal, whichever team, this will be the key for, for the match. Uh, Inter got some uh, Miranda back. Uh, he's the centre back, so that will help boost their defence. But they are struggling for goals uh, recently, so they they can really uh, they they can't really fall behind because then I, I think that they would be struggling to. To, to get back the first first picture of the season uh, between these two ended with 3-1 win of uh, Inter away from home and I'm expecting completely different uh, different match this time uh, looking at Roma they've got nine Golan back after disciplinary uh, matters uh, they've got De Rossi so they are pretty much uh, with their strongest uh, 11 they will probably apply their usual 4-3-3 and counter-attacking play, they, 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 they will not open up against Inter. Uh, considering what all, all, all what I've said, and the players that are back, so pretty much both teams are in their full strength. Uh, and the current form, which has to be only taken into account in a way because of the break. Uh, I was looking at the goals market because I couldn't figure out the winner of the game or even on the Asian handicap. I couldn't see anything that would... Uh, make me pick something for for the handicap. So I've gone for the goals market and under 2.75 at 1.95 odds. Uh, I think this represents value considering it's a 2.75 handic- uh, sorry line goals line. So if if it's three goals, then it's a half lost only. Uh, I expect something like one one a draw. What just like Martin said, a draw is realistic in this one. Okay, good stuff. Right, lads. So that uh, brings us to the end of our podcast. Then I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you're not, you know, feeling a bit blue with the news that Ronaldinho retired. I was trying to think of my favorite moment. So, I was going to ask the lads. Ah, isn't it terrible? He's gone. I, I remember the first time I seen him doing the look away. And then kicking, and and I remember going to like football training the, the, the day after that, and just we were driving our manager mental trying to do Ronaldinho tricks. So uh, yeah, so I hope this brightens up your football and mood, and that you're looking forward to the action from the weekend, and hopefully you win win a few quid as well. Let's do our uh, social media reminders then. Johnny, where are you on the internet? Product Johnny on Twitter. I'm as Product Johnny. Uh, also on uh, Facebook. And uh, Martin? Yeah, guys, come and have a chat with me. Um, happy to say hi and help out with anything that you may need on Pro Tipster. Um, I'm Pro Tipster Martin on Facebook, and you can find me on Twitter at Pro Tipster ENG. Magic. And you can find me, Pro Tipster Pod, on Twitter, and you can get in touch with any of us over on the Facebook page. Just go to Facebook and have a look for Pro tipster uk we've got groups there as well premier league groups nhl groups nfl groups nba groups so come on over there chat with us and uh, share your tips make sure and check out protipster.com as well where you can uh, earn money by sharing your winning sports tips and if you're not that good at uh, making winning sports tips you come on over check out protipster.com anyway because there's loads of people there who are very good at it and you can they will help you Make a few bob that way as well. Okay then, so for me and the boys, take it easy. Have a nice weekend and enjoy the football. Good luck. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out protipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are protipsterglobal. Or get in touch on Twitter, protipsteren or protipsterirl. Bye.